Apple is causing its customers a lot of pain in the head. The most notorious is the lack of flash support in iOS devices. The users have to either remove themselves completely from web videos and web games, or stick to crutches like special flash browsers. Now that Steve Jobs is dead, as well as his thoughts on flash, there was a hope for the light at the end of the tunnel. But this light was shut down by Adobe, the maker of Flash. They seized development of Flash in favor of HTML5, which should replace Flash technology. However, content owners are reluctant to jump on another technology, and most of them don't maintain a specific site for Apple devices. I personally need Flash on my iPad to watch The Daily Show, which doesn't have an iPad app. They offer to purchase episodes on iTunes instead, which is ridiculous since they are available for free on their site. That is actually an interesting point. By not including Flash to their devices, Apple forces customers to purchase software to enable that compatibility, and by not making an HTML5 site, content providers force their viewers to purchase episodes of their shows. So, having no Flash is profitable. Anyway, the Flash-enabled browsers for iOS do not actually enable Flash on your device. What they do is convert the content on their sites from Flash to Apple-friendly format and transfer it to your device. This has quite a few major drawbacks. First, forget about privacy, as the server owners know what you are browsing. Second, you need a permanent internet connection for that to work. And the last but not the least, the quality is awful. iOS Flash Video is nothing compared to desktop video on the same bandwidth. The quality is really bad and the frame rate is very low. Keep that in mind. Still, let's compare the three most popular Flash-enabled browsers on the iPad. I'm using the third generation iPad which has a fast 1.5 megabit internet connection over Wi-Fi. Obviously, I can't use the daily show as test video for copyright issues. So instead, I'll show a dynamic video from my YouTube channel. You may watch it on your desktop in HD just to get the idea how it should look like. So the worst utility so far is the Photon browser. You open a page and then have to press the lightning button so it will fetch the page through their servers. It has some serious sound issues, as in most cases the lips do not sync with the speech and sometimes the sound skips. The picture is very grainy even on moderate quality settings. It is impossible to watch a talk show with Photon Browser. The next program is SkyFi Browser. It is probably the most famous one. Let's have a look. It actually has a somewhat better performance, but the usability is worse. 
it pops up a little window prompting you to play the video. When you click on it, it starts to prepare the content which takes like forever. Just sit back and wait. The quality is much better and there aren't much sound issues. But the video seems to come in chunks, which is indicated by the bar at the top of the screen, so you can't just click on the desired location of the progress bar to start video from there. It is a major drawback, but video performance is better. The last program is Puffin Browser. It somewhat combines the look and feel of the first, the Photon Browser, with the quality of Skyfire. Let's see what happens when we get our creativity running, blades spinning and bits turning. Let's get our hands on some brand name power at some brand new prices. And put those tools to work, we're saving, we're doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. This is the best performance so far, and the progress bar is there. However, it really does keep a lot of frames, which is visible even in static shows like interviews. But so far, Puffin is the best way to watch Flash on iPad. The funny thing is, my trusty Nokia N900 has Flash support built in since its release in 2009 and runs that video perfectly smooth. Nice one, Apple. <laughs>